It's time for our health report and joining us now is our health reporter, Lino Mudu. Hello, Lino. Hello, Esther. Hello, everyone. Uh, researchers in the United Kingdom say a measles infection can zap the immune system's memory, putting people at risk all over again for diseases they already had, like chickenpox. VOA's Arash Arabdasi looks at the lab where scientists made the discovery. New studies show a devastating and highly contagious disease causes even more harm than previously thought. For a period of perhaps five years after infection, individuals who catch measles, not have the vaccine, but catch natural measles, develop this state where they're much more susceptible to infection, and they even seem to be able to catch things that they'd previously become immune to. Scientists call it immune amnesia, and they say it opens the potentially life-threatening door for the unvaccinated. If you live in a community where there are more people who experience measles or who don't vaccinate, you are more likely to get other infections because there will be more people susceptible. Dr. Velislava Petrova is an immunologist and lead author at the Welcome Sanger Institute in Britain. Scientists here specialize in genetics. For the first time, we could use a technique that allows us to read the genes that the immune system uses to produce antibodies and be able to track specific immune cells before and after infection in order to find out what happens to them after measles. What they found was worse than expected. It's not just immune amnesia, but a hampered ability to respond to new diseases. After measles, up to five years, people are, um, have increased rate of other infections with other pathogens, which shows that there is an effect that we can observe on a population level. Measles is one of the world's most contagious viruses. It can leave children with brain damage or hearing loss. The CDC says infections are at a 25-year high amid an anti-vaccination movement based upon unproven fears about the safety of vaccines themselves. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News, Washington. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month in the United States, a time dedicated to spotlight epilepsy and raise awareness and support. Epilepsy is one of the most common neurological diseases in the world. The condition affects about 65 million people worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. And people who suffer from epilepsy have recurrent seizures, sudden uncontrolled electrical disturbance in the brain. Seizures can affect a part of the body, partial seizures, or the entire body, generalized seizures. According to the WHO, nearly 80% of people with epilepsy live in low- and middle-income countries. However, three-quarters of them are not getting the treatment they need. Now, joining us in the studio for more on epilepsy is Dr. Steve Owens, Vice President of Programs and Services with the Epilepsy Foundation. Dr. Owens, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Help us understand epilepsy and what causes it. Well, epilepsy, it can be caused by a congenital, what we mean when someone is born, when a baby is being formed, but also by traumatic injury to the head or to the brain, but it most often globally is caused by a parasite called neurosister sarcosis. Okay. So those are the main things that causes epilepsy. Now seizures is very much a part of uh, epilepsy. Mm -hmm. What causes seizures? Are there some triggers? Well, we really don't know what causes seizures, but yes, there are triggers that can make someone have a seizure. Triggers such as in the United States missing their medications, but also not getting enough sleep. Um, stress can also cause um, seizures. But also uh, alcohol is also another thing that can cause seizures. But in general, when someone is diagnosed with epilepsy, we want to make sure that they take their medicines, that they get enough rest and they get enough sleep and try to be in environments that are not stressful because they can trigger seizures. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, when someone is having a seizure and mm -hmm. people are around, what should they, what should they do? Well, it really depends on the type of seizures they're having. If it's the, uh, but there are three things that you can do regardless of what type of seizure the person having. We have three things to remember, stay safe side. So stay with the person, make sure that they are not gonna harm themselves. So you want to stay with the person, but immediately start timing the seizures because most often seizures last less than three minutes or so. So if the seizure, once you start timing it, you wanna keep the person, you wanna stay with the person, call for help. 
and you want to turn the person um, on their side. So that, in order to keep any type of fluid, if they're having the convulsive type seizures from draining uh, and, and choking on there, we do not want anyone to put anything in their mouth. Do not, that mean a spoon or ball or anything, because that's a myth. You know, a person cannot swallow their tongue. Yes, and yeah. speaking of myth, there are, there are several myths around epilepsy. One such myth is the fact that it may be contagious through saliva. Uh, talk mm. to us about that. Well, epilepsy is not contagious. And also a person is not possessed because in, in many religious settings, they think someone Absolutely. may be possessed by a demon, but it's not contagious. People with epilepsy, we think that um, the public, they think that they're slow, but they have normal intelligence. That's another myth. It's not contagious. It can't go from one person to the other. You should help someone if you see one having a seizure. Yes, can yeah. they get involved in uh, physical activities like sports, extreme sports? Yes, but you must um, use what we call common sense, depending on the sport. If your seizures are um, predictable, maybe you can as be in sports that may um, align with the type of seizure you have. Yes. But if, if there are other types of sport, we say cons consult your physician. But yes, you can participate in the sports, sports. We recommend that you don't swim because you could have a seizure while swimming. Mm -hmm. um, but other sports, basketball, any, you know, anything sports, but it's just to be safe, knowing your seizures, know what triggers your seizures, and make sure you're taking medicines because and there are many people with, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and before we wrap, uh, what about collaboration? Your organization is a major one in the U.S. that addresses seizures. Do you collaborate with countries, uh, low- and middle-income countries? What kind of help yes, do you Yes, we uh, 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 work with the International League on Epilepsy and also mm -hmm. the International Bureau on Epilepsy to raise education and awareness to make sure that treatments are available for people living in uh, low- and middle-income countries. Because treatment is definitely not as sexy as I mentioned in the introduction, right. by many people in, in uh, underdeveloped countries. Right, okay. right, yes, and so we always want people to stay and know what may trigger the seizure, decrease stress, get enough sleep, and if they're on medicines, take their medicines. Very good point, Dr. Owens. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And that was uh, Dr. Steve Owens. He is the Vice President of Programs and Services with the Epilepsy Foundation here in the United States. And that's today's health report. Back to you, Esther. Thank you, Lino. Be sure to watch Lino Mudu's health reports every Tuesday on Africa 54.